Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Modded Minecraft, playing Feed the Beast Infinity. And in my last episode, I just started building our starter house, our log cabin out in the woods here. And as you can see, I've done quite a bit of work to it off camera since then. It's kind of what I would call finished, at least for now, since we don't have many blocks to choose from. I think it turned out pretty good. Do a little walk around here so we can see all the sides. This side's kind of boring for now. I definitely do need some windows, but I don't have any glass just yet. But I really like this type of roof on these buildings, and I always like to put these little peaks off to the side too, because they just add a little bit of flair to it. And I put a bit of a balcony area off here to the side, mostly for looks, because it looks cool on the side of our roof here, but also it helps as another way out of the house, just in case maybe there's creepers blocking the door or something like that. I could always escape out this way if I needed to. And on the inside, there's still not much on the inside yet, it's still kind of basic. But it'll do for now, I just needed a basic starter house for our base, so this does the job. I think it turned out pretty cool so far. And I'll try to change the blocks out later once I get a chisel and stuff. So, for today's episode, I need to start getting some progress done on our starting stuff, so I think the first things that I want to do are first of all getting a Tinker's Construct smeltery, I think they're called. It's either a forge or a smeltery. I want to get one of those started up in our base so that I can start building our basic tools and upgrading tools from there on, because like I said in the last episode, it's pretty much one of the coolest mods in this mod pack. So I definitely want to get that started as soon as possible. And I want to get a chisel built so that I can start doing different types of blocks around our base as soon as possible so we can actually get some really cool builds going pretty early on since it'll save us having to go find a bunch of different types of blocks. And I think we also are going to need to do at least some sort of basic food supply for our base here. So as far as, uh, as, far as starting the smeltery from Tinker's Construct, I'd need to build one of those or find some pieces for it. I was also looking up how to build a sleeping bag, so I'm definitely going to need one of these guys for doing the recordings for this, because every time it turns to night, I would have to have a bed with me, and a sleeping bag is actually, you just right-click it, and it sleeps wherever you're standing, so you don't need to place a bed. So, definitely want to get one of those guys. But, as far as the smeltery goes, we need seared bricks for that. Let's see here, I think that'll do. Whoops. Check out the recipe for this. So that needs four seared bricks, which require cooking grout. And grout is clay and sand and gravel. So it requires quite a bit of gathering, but first of all, I want to check because I knew that we had that village in the last episode down south, where you can see it on the map right here. This one right here. That had quite a few Tinker's Construct buildings in it, and there's a chance that there will be a smeltery in those villages as well. So I want to go check that out first to see if there's any seared bricks in a smeltery over there so I can collect those blocks and use them to build our smeltery at our base or at least a start to our smeltery. So I'm going to head over there and see you guys there. Aha! So they do have a smeltery. <laughs> Of course, it was all the way in the last place that I checked in this village, basically the furthest corner from where I started looking. But that's awesome, so usually it's actually pretty rare that you find one of these in a village, but this is a huge village, so I figure that they would have one here. Oh yeah, and you can see the beacon kind of, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the recording, but there's a green beacon going up over there for my base. It's actually a really cool feature of this map, is if you place waypoints, Oh, that was weird. If you place waypoints for your base, like you can see here it says home, it will put a beacon up in the air to show where that is, so it makes it really easy to find things like that. So, as far as this smeltery goes though, you can see these are the seared bricks I was talking about that you need to build your first smeltery. And I think they have to be bigger than this, I'm not sure. But this gives us a lot of starting, starting pieces for it, so this will save us a ton of time. And we should even be able to get a basic smelter going just off of these bricks here. Although I'm not sure if you can do a 2x2 two two like this one is. Is this 3x3 three three or 2x2? Two two? Oh, that is 3x3, three three. okay. So yeah, it needs to be 3x3 three three in the bottom, and then you have to surround it with seared bricks also. 
And then you have to fuel these generally with lava. So obviously that's going to be kind of tricky since we just started our world. Going to have to go get a bucket together and find some lava once we get this built up over at our base. And what you do with these things is you actually put ores into them. Like you can put iron ore into it and it will give you two iron ingots per iron ore. So it actually doubles your ores, which is another amazing part about this mod and this actual the smeltery here. And you can use these casting tables and the casting basins to actually pour the like molten iron out and make ingots or make iron blocks and it just saves a ton of time on doing basically what you would normally do in a furnace and it doubles your ore production which is really good. So I'm just going to go ahead and collect the rest of this smeltery here, try to get it back to our base. And then I guess I'm going to have to go find some iron and... Well, I needed iron anyway for our chisel, but I need an iron bucket now so I can go get some lava to fuel this thing. So that is the one catch. You can't use coal like you would on a furnace. You do have to fill it with lava and it uses that over time to smelt whatever you put into the smeltery. And another cool thing you can do with this is make actually like unique types of metals. If you mix two different types of metals, it will turn them into different types of metals. And most of those things can be found in the, on the wiki or in the book that it gives you in the beginning, which I think is over at my base. So if you want to find those out, you can find those there. But this is a really good help. This will help us get our smeltery started pretty much right away instead of going and collecting all of that clay and sand and gravel. And yeah, and you can see it shows exactly where my home is and if I look at it, it will say the distance to it and everything. It's a really cool feature. Great part of a mod pack and another thing that would be awesome to have in vanilla Minecraft. So, see you guys back at the base. Alright, so I'm back at our cabin here and I forgot to show you guys in the last one, but I did get everything together that I needed for our sleeping bag here. And again, that just works like a bed. So anytime that you walk around, you can just right click it. It will put you down on the ground and sleep the night off. And I don't think it affects where your spawning location is. I think you still spawn in the last bed that you slept in. But if you can see, I could right click it and it acts like I was trying to right click a bed. And I don't need to put it on the ground or anything. I could just right click it while it's in my hand and it'll put me on the ground and sleep. It's a really cool feature so you don't have to carry a bed around with you everywhere and keep breaking them and losing your spawn points. So yeah, just needs quite a bit of wool and I have a couple of carpet left over from that. And so we're gonna need to get our smeltery built up. I'm not gonna attach it to our cabin, I don't think. Probably look a bit ugly if it was sitting on the side of that. So I think I'm just gonna put it off to the side here. Maybe in this location right here. And also since the last episode, I did a bit of an upgrade to my computer because I was noticing quite a bit of lag. What do we have here? We have carrot seeds and mandrake seeds, huh? So I guess, why would you need carrot seeds if you can just plant carrots? Ha. Huh. I guess I'll have to check that out later on to see if that actually is better than just planting normal carrots here. Oh, nice. You can right-click these berry bushes to get the berries off them. That's cool. Although I don't need any hunger right now, so I can't see how much they give back, but it's probably not much. But that's a great way to have a early food source, actually, is these little bushes. Depending how long it takes for the berries to come back on them. But yeah, since last time, I had quite a bit of lag in the last episode, and since then I've upgraded from 4 gigabytes of memory to another 8, so now I have 12 gigabytes total. So now if it lags, I don't know what to tell you guys. Hopefully it doesn't anymore. But I don't know what to do if it lags from here on out. Because 12, gig 12 gigabytes of RAM is more than enough to run something like Minecraft, at least I would think so. So... Like I said earlier with the smeltery, we need to start with a 3x3 three three on the bottom because this is a multi-block structure which means that you actually build a working entity or a working structure out of multiple blocks and it turns into a single block or it turns into a basically right-clickable structure later on. So we need to surround the sides here with seared bricks. And for now, actually, this is all you need to get this system going. But I do need a couple other things, like... Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and put down these casting tables and the basins. 
But I do need a way to hold the lava on this system and a controller mechanism. So let me see if I can search those up really quick. Seared, I don't remember if they start with seared in the name. Yeah, all right. So the seared tank is what we put our lava into. So I'm going to need one of these. So that's just seared brick around a glass block in the center. That's pretty easy to build. And the other thing I need is a controller. I guess I'll have to look that up. I don't think it has seared in the name. Reactor controller, there we go, smeltery controller. And for that, I just need the bricks. So I guess I still do need to go get a bit of clay and sand and gravel to get those going. But once I have both of those pieces, I can start actually smelting right away with this structure. And you can make this as tall as you want, and it'll hold more blocks the taller you make it. But for now, obviously, we don't need it to, to be too crazy tall. So I'm just going to use what blocks that we did find over in the village there to get it a bit taller here. I think it's 12 per layer, so this will actually give us more than enough to do four layers here. Yeah, awesome. It's weird because it was only two layers tall in the village, but I guess they were filling in the corners at the village, and you don't need those actually in your structure. So there we go, and I guess I'll have to get a bit of the clay, gravel, and sand gathered up, so I should probably get some tools for that. I don't have any cobblestone on me. I don't have any cobblestone at all. <laughs> Alright, so... I guess I'll have to do all that stuff off camera since it's kind of boring gathering those materials. And then I'll be right back once I get the grout going and we'll smelt that up. Alright, so I was just collecting the last of our sand that I needed for the smeltery pieces here from a beach that I found near our base. And check out this area here. It is really cool to have some steep cliffs all the way around this little ocean area here. It's like a nice cove that you would expect to see some huge ships or something, or like a hidden pirate cove or something like that. Either way, it looks really cool from up here with these steep cliff sides around it. Don't really see anything like that in normal Minecraft, so that's really cool. And I also wanted to point out, on my way over here, I noticed some weird spots on our map. If you see here, these darker spots here, I noticed those on my way over in between our base and here. And when I went by them, I found out that it was these. These little obsidian shrines, or whatever they are. And they have chests in the center of them, each of them do. But I'm kind of afraid to open them. They are from Thaumcraft, as you can see in the top. These obsidian totems are from Thaumcraft. And I'm pretty sure these types of things are normally a bad sign in Thaumcraft. I think they're the kinds of thing that spawn bad guys like wisps that shoot you with electricity and stuff. I'm not completely positive, but judging by how dark they are and how they make the grass dark around them, it's probably not a good sign, and I have three of them right next to my base, so hopefully that isn't bad omens for the future. No, you can't have my carrot. Go away. Get. <laughs> completely forgot that I had my carrot out. Um, so anyways, I have everything that I need for the seared controller and the thing that I need the lava for, so I'm going to throw those together and I guess I'll try to get some iron and our lava off camera and come back once I have those so we can start doing or at least start showing how the smeltery works here, so I'll see you guys then. Alright, so I got back from our exploration there. I got quite a bit of iron out of it and I got a lava bucket out of it as well. I made an iron bucket and I happened to run into a high up piece of lava in a cave system, which so I got lucky with that so I didn't have to go all the way down to lava level to find lava. So I got all of these seared bricks and our glass going, so that should give us an everything that we need to build our controller. Yep. And our other piece in there gave us a book teaching us how to do the rest of the smelting stuff. And we're going to need to build the tank as well to hold our lava, so we got both of those. And now when I go attach these to our smelter, it should just turn it on and automatically make it into a smeltery multi-block structure. So let's see, we put the controller, we'll put our tank there, and you can see this thing lit up, basically letting us know that we completed our multi-block structure. So this whole thing is now basically one entity, kind of like a furnace, but it's made up of multiple blocks. It's really cool. So if I right-click this, you can see our smeltery right here. 
This is where I would put our ores that want to be smelted. This shows, I believe, how much actual ore is on the inside that's melted. Like if we had melted iron in there, it would show in here. And this is how much lava is in our system, which currently we have none, so let's go ahead and toss some in there. Which we only have one bucket so far, but that should be enough to at least get a little bit going. So I'm going to throw our four iron in here. You can see their progress bars on the left there. And I threw four in there, and like I said earlier, this should double our ores. So those four iron ore there should turn into eight iron ingots. And I'll be able to pour those out, which actually... Let me go ahead and make some spouts for the side of our structure here. Let's see... Oh, I guess I used all of the seared stuff there, so let me go ahead and cook up a bit more grout. Let's some gravel, sand, and clay. Turn these into grout here. I guess I don't need too much, so I'll just do 16 for now, I guess. And get those cooking. Alright, and then when those are done, I only need about three, I think, to start making the spouts for that. Let's go see if this has any more progress yet. Nice, yeah, so it already melted everything here, and you can see it's melted here. It says eight ingots, so like I said, doubles the amount that we get out of our normal ore, which is awesome. So basically, now we don't need furnaces at all for our ore. We can just throw everything that we find in here. It doubles everything out. It's really cool. Although I don't have enough just yet to pour out a full block. I only have enough to pour out ingots. And I can't do that just yet either until I get gold. And I'll show you why in just a second here after I grab these. I'm just going to make a couple spouts for the side of our smeltery. And these are what allow you to actually pour the molten metals out of the side. So I'm going to put one above each of these here. And if it was ready, which it's not because I don't have enough iron in there just yet, I could right-click these and it would pour it out into this. So, how these work, though, is you can place things like this iron pickaxe head that I found in our village earlier. I could place this here, and I could pour gold over it, and it would basically make a mold there of that iron pickaxe head, and I could pull it out, and it would just have the mold left behind made out of gold. And then I could pour whatever I wanted into that and make as many pickaxe heads as I wanted, so it's really cool. And I could do the same thing with ingots, but since I don't have gold just yet, I can't do anything with that. But we do have this started and ready to go. The next things I just need for that are gold, but it's probably enough of that for this episode. Let's see if we can get our chisel built. Yep, we still have plenty of iron left over. There we go. So again, I wanted to show this in our first episode, but we didn't have the iron for it. But, if I just right-click this chisel, it should open a menu. Yep, there we go. And if I put these blocks in here, yeah, you can see we have a ton of options here. It looks like at least 16 options that I can turn each of these spruce things into, whichever type of texture that I want. And I can put that, so like, say I wanted these ones here, I could just click that. It uses a little bit of our chisel, and now I have... 12 of this type of texture that I could use on our base here if I wanted. And if I didn't like that one, I could just toss it back in. Grab another one here. Maybe I want to use this type for a ceiling structure or something. I could grab that and start throwing it in here. It's really cool. So like I said in the first episode, it basically allows us to turn any block into, you know, at least with this one, up to 15 other different types of textures without needing to go gather a bunch of other blocks, so it's really cool. And I'll be using that for sure to... I guess I should sleep off the night here. But I'm going to be de definitely using that a lot, especially for building our base off the beginning here, since I won't need to gather a bunch of materials for it. I can just use basic things like spruce and cobblestone. Let's see if I have any cobblestone I could throw in there. Yeah, look at all these options just for cobblestone, including dyed versions of them of pretty much every color and I don't need to go collect the dyes for it. All I have to do is put it in the chisel and I automatically have that type of block. It's so cool. This is another one of the probably one of the top five coolest mods in modded Minecraft just because the amount of building options that it gives you. And I could toss that back in and I can get a bunch of different types of brick structures that I, if I wanted as well without having to 
go make stone bricks or anything like that, so that's really cool. That'll definitely help us build up our base from the beginning here. Although I don't think I have that much time to <laughs> tear this whole thing down and rebuild it. I might end up doing quite a bit of that off camera again by using the chisel to get a couple different textures added into our base here. And let's see, the last thing that I want to do in this episode is get a bit of food started, so I guess I will get started on that before we finish the episode. So I grabbed a couple of different types of seeds out of our base that we have so far to start planting, just to at least get some basic food started here. Hopefully I'll be able to plant each of them so we can see what they do. So I wanted to see if carrot seeds, and I also have potato seeds here, I want to see if each of those actually are more productive than using normal carrots, because I know you can just right-click carrots if you want to plant those, but let's find out if those, so let's see, the carrots are over here. I guess I'll plant some normal carrots on this side here. And we'll get some wheat. So I want to see if the potatoes and carrots, based on those seeds, are actually more productive than just normally planting them, or maybe they're just in the game so that it's not as hard to find potatoes and carrots, since you generally have to find those in a base. Oh, cool. And I also wanted to test here if we could use the strawberries to make seeds and plant those, and it seems like we can. So I'm definitely going to get some of those guys planted as well, since pretty sure we can use those to make juices. Let's see here. Do we have a strawberry? Yeah, so I think with all these juices, all you need is the fruit and a juicer, which is really easy to make. It's just stone on top of a pressure plate. And that's a really good food source early on, so if I can start getting fruit growing, that'll make it really easy for us to have a starter food here. So that'll be pretty good for a start, and we'll see once these grow up later how they're going. But that's about it for this episode, guys. So I'm just going to wrap it up here. And as always, check out that sweet leather hat. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent day. See you later.